I just mentioned wheat futures com continuing to rally. We've seen other commodities like oil rising as well. If China really comes out of that COVID lockdown, won't we see more inflationary pressures and how would that affect markets? Well, I, I think that's right. It, it, it's slightly complex, but I think you have to look at China very much uh, as we saw the US, Europe uh, and other markets. We had a very, very sharp downfall in GDP in one quarter, something like a 30 percent fall in the US, uh, but very quickly recovered. The US pretty well recovered uh, what it lost, uh, Europe slightly less, uh, the U UK slightly less again. So I think that the real situation with these lockdowns is you do get spikes downwards of GDP, uh, but you also see uh, quite uh, significant recoveries, um, maybe not back to what it was before, but pretty close. So um, I can see us having maybe a temporary period where China comes back on stream uh, and uh, looks to do business again. Uh, and of course, that'll be positive for the markets. But I see that being very much short term, which um, probably leads to Lloyd Blankfein's uh, remarks over the week weekend about looking at a recession maybe longer term. This push and pull in the market is really interesting right now, especially given that also the dollar is so strong, which would, would usually mean uh, really pressure on the commodity space, right? Where do you see the greenback going? Well, I think the greenback's likely to stay strong for a while. You know, tensions in uh, Ukraine aren't going to go away uh, quickly. Uh, they will probably become less of a front page or news item in, in the evenings, uh, but it's not going to go away quickly, and, and that's always good for the dollar. It seems difficult to see any other currency really taking over. You know, China's had a weak spot recently. Um, the dollar, obviously, the dollar-euro cross is, is an important one, and one has to be strong when the other's weak. Uh, and we've seen certain currencies like uh, sterling fall out of bed. So I think that really focuses on a strongish dollar. Uh, the debate over U.S. interest rates is against 50 basis points and 75 basis points will also keep the attention there. So I can see the dollar staying strong strong for a while. Uh, does that mean you actually do see euro dollar parity given the widening fundamentals seem to be in place? Well, that's a bold uh, statement. Um, but then again, we almost had sterling dollar parity back in 1985, just as I was going to business school funding out of the UK. So um, I am aware that these, these things can happen. I think there would probably be a spike down. Um, I wouldn't see it being sustainable at that rate. But, you know, we have a little way to go yet. And, um, uh, and I think that the features at the moment seem to imply dollar strength, at least maybe for the next quarter. Are we starting to see a bit more appeal in using government bonds as a way to offset some of the equity volatility? Well, that's a difficult one, of course, because if we're looking at interest rates, I mean, the uh, the bias for interest rates is to go up. You know, I think there's no doubt about that. That's just going to happen. And, yeah, we may see breaks in that particular trend, but it looks as if that trend now is is fairly firmly set. Um, the, the issue with equity volatility is that uh, it's going to happen in an environment like this. We are very much in a transition environment where we're looking at a transition to high higher interest rates, to higher inflation, uh, to higher food prices. Uh, and that sort of transition is going to create volatility. And there's probably nowhere really to hide except in the short term in cash. And of course, uh, based on the aforementioned conversation, probably dollar cash. But, but you can't keep all your eggs in one basket. You've always got to keep uh, aware of the fact that markets will move, markets will change. Mm. Um, and maybe it is time when, when other currencies seem cheap to start accumulating. And yet some traders have at one point in the past year pointed to crypto being perhaps a hedge given all of these inflationary pressures you're calling this a bull market play thing where do we go from here well, I think the thing with, with crypto is they're really showing their, uh, their their colors, you know, in this sort of environment, the way they've come off so much. Uh, the problem with cryptos is, you know, who's your daddy? Uh, the Fed may be immensely fallible, as I've been saying for a, a number of years, um, but at least it is there. It does have the power of uh, the state, the power of taxation behind it. And I think we have to focus on those fundamentals. Now, if you're in rubles and rubles falling out of bed, 
said, you probably need some kind of hedge, and cryptos for a short period were that. Uh, but I think it's very difficult, really, to say that they are anything but a small, uh, di a small diversionary. Um, uh, issue um, in, in terms of the uh, what you're looking at in terms of major financials.